Hi, my name is Thomas, and I'm from El Cibio, and I'm one of the product consultants working at the Queen's Key location. Um, today, we have five different um, cognacs right here coming from all different houses. And um, my friend is on the other end right now. Um, his name is Dante Concepcion, and he's the expert when it comes to cognac and other spirits, and he's going to help me um, to re-educate myself, and hopefully he can give you a lot of more information, to, you know, so you can um, educate yourself as well, too. So, Dante, um, can you see me here? Hey, Thomas, how are you? I'm good, Dante, how are you? Thanks for coming in today. I'm doing today. well. Thanks for having me, this well, is exciting. Well, I'm gonna start with the, uh, the reason I got into um, cognac. Um, I'm, you know, I drank a lot of spirits, beer, wine in the beginning, but uh, main reason I got into cognac is the James Bond. And everything in my life evolves around James Bond. And, um, you know, it's very sophisticated um, ADV as far as I know. Can you explain to us what um, cognac is actually? Ab absolutely. So cognac, like you, like you mentioned, is a very premium, very elegant spirit. A lot of people ask, what's the difference between cognac and, and brandy? Because brandy is a very similar product. The difference between cognac and brandy is essentially, cognac's a very specific style of brandy. You can make brandy almost from any type of fruit wine, very, different variations of eau de vie, but cognac has to come from the cognac region of France. It comes, along comes with a lot of rules and regulations about what they can do, uh, where, when, what time of the year they can make it. Uh, so there's, it's a very, very limited production time for, for cognac. So uh, cognac is, again, a very, very premium spirit. So is that why cognac is more expensive than, I would say, bourbon or brandy, just because there's so much regulation into it? Absolutely. So there, there's tons of rules and regulations around cognac. Like I said, limited distillation period of time. So they can only distill cognac in the cognac region from October 1st to March 31st. So that's a very limited window uh, for when they can distill. When you, when you think of things like, like vodka or whiskey or anything else, you can distill that all year round using all the grapes. Because when you think about cognac and you're using specific grape varietals that are all grown in the cognac region of France, there's six regions or six crews uh, in cognac that you can grow these grapes in. You have to grow the grapes. You have to harvest them. Most of them are hand harvested. You have to make the wine. The wine has to be good and, and tested. And then you can make the cognac. And then again, you have your limited production time, and then you have your aging time using the most expensive wood in the world. So the, when you think of whiskey and other things, you can, you're using American oak, you can use you know, all kinds of different barrels. But for cognac production, only French oak, and it's only two types of French oak they can use, and they're very rare. They probably cost anywhere from 600 to over 1,000 euro per barrel to make. Uh, so the cost associated with making cognac is what kind of drives the, 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 end, the end result of the, of the price of the, of the cognac. Cool, so right now we have uh, five different houses here. Uh, first one is Martel VS, uh, second one is the Remy Martin VSOP, third one is a Duce VSOP, next one is the um, Cravassier XO, and the last one, um, Hennessy XO. Um, can you just give us a little bit insight to what this uh, VS, VSOP, and X XO means as well before we start? Yeah, those are, basically, those are basically designations that tell you about the quality and how they produce each cognac. Uh, along with those kind of signatures come with a, basically like an age statement. So VS stands for very special or very superior, and that's a minimum of two years aged in that French oak. As we move along down the line, we've got VSOP, which stands for very special or very superior old pale, and that's a minimum of four years. So we have one VS, we have two VSOPs that we're tasting today, and then we move up to the XOs, which stands for extra old. And just in 2018, they actually changed the, uh, the age requirement for that designation, and that's minimum of 10 years uh, spent in that oak barrel. I guess we can start now then. But when I look at the Martel label here, um, it has three stars on the front label, and it also will say um, single distillery. Can you explain to us what this a three star and the uh, single distillery is all so about the, for Martel? The single distillery, because most of these cognac houses, um, they do gather eau de vie or, or it's called, it's their, their double distilled spirit from different 
winemakers and different cognac makers uh, across the region. So this single distillery is they're just producing and they're make, creating this blend from cognacs or eau de vies from one single distillery source. Uh, so this is going to be a more, I'd say, a more uh, concentrated flavor profile. Um, this is a great flavor profile. Um, we, we can get we can get right into tasting if you yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Talk a I'm, I'm more ready about whenever it. you are. Absolutely. So a little we'll, we'll we'll pick up this. So this is the Martel VS or very special. A little bit of a Martel. This is probably I think it is the oldest continuous running distillery. This actually started in 1715. So over 300 years now they've been they've been producing cognac. Uh, so again, this one they are taking cognacs or eau de vies from one single distillery source blending those and producing it and putting into this bottle here. Um, so let's give this, let's give this a nose. There's a ton of citrus I can smell right now. Lots of citrus, lots of citrus. Lots and lots of citrus, you're, yes. You're gonna get a lot of orchard fruit. So this, this one in particular is a little bit more of a lighter bodied, uh, lighter bodied cognac. We're gonna get lots of citrus, lots of orchard fruit, definitely some pear, some apricot. For sure, pear, yes. And that citrus is kind of coming in through with a, like a candied lemon. There's also a little bit of a plum and apricot too into it. All right, let's give this, let's give this a taste. I'm going to give you a virtual cheers as, we, cheers as we go through here. We got four more to go after this. Yeah. That citrus definitely follows through on the palate. You get a little does. bit of a subtle spice. Yeah, a little bit yep. of subtle spice. Um, very nicely, like fruity, well balanced, very easy to drink. For someone who's just started into cognac, this is this is a great cognac to, to start with. Um, it's not as full bodied as, as some of the other cognacs. No. Uh, it allows you to kind of start an appreciation for the flavors of cognac. Um, so I think that's 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 a fantastic whiskey. The finish, um, it's got a nice kind of short, smooth finish. Doesn't linger. Doesn't linger too much. Um, this would be a great, uh, a great mixing cognac as well. We're actually going to make a cocktail uh, uh, after finish the whole tasting that we'll use the Martel VS for. Okay. For me, it was um, uh, the citrus from the nose and palate was really, really there. But um, although it has very short taste, um, the fruitiness kind of lingers in the mouth a little bit. It's almost like yeah. a chewing onto the candy apple for me a little bit. There you go. Yeah, it was good. Nice thing to go in. Uh, next one, Remy Martin. Um, what is this a fine champagne mean, honestly? Like every time I see Remy Martin, um, on the label it says fine champagne. Cor correct, so uh, I'm gonna switch these out here uh, so our camera can, can see these. So the Remy Martin, you, like you said, you'll see on the label, cognac fine champagne. So as I mentioned earlier, there are six different regions or crews as you would call in champagne that they can pull their grapes from. When you see something that says fine champagne, on it, that means they're pulling grapes from two of those six regions, uh, Grand Champagne and Petite Champagne. And over 50% of the grapes used have to be from Grand Champagne. And the reason why they call that out is because those two are kind of like the upper echelon of those six crews. Uh, they have a little bit of a chalky soil uh, that offer the, the perfect terroir for, for harvesting these grapes. So definitely a call to the premium quality of Remy Martin. Um, and uh, like I said, VSOP, this is aged for a minimum of four years, uh, very superior, very special old pale. Um, and we can jump right into the tasting. Yeah. So what do you get off the nose off this one, Thomas? Um, I get a little bit of prune and a little bit of um, vanilla at the same time. Yeah, definitely, definitely lots of vanilla on the nose. And this is where you're going to start to see a little bit of a difference in the, in the influence of the oak. So like I said, the, the, the Martel, uh, mostly of kind of that, that trans, the transe variation, this one's going to be mostly limousine oak. And that's where you're going to get a lot of that vanillin or those vanilla flavors oh. or those aromas. Okay. Give it a taste. Definitely heavier oak influence on this one. Definitely heavier. Definitely yeah, definitely heavier. heavier, heavier oak. You can taste kind of the wood. Yep. Still coming, still coming forward. Still, still a little bit more of a lighter bodied cognac. You're getting a lot of those ripe fruits, 
a little bit less of the orchard fruit, more so kind of like dark berries. Uh, I'm yep. getting on this one. Um, for me, it's um, just like you said, um, berries for sure. And uh, the spice of the oak is still there, but um, vanilla kind of um, covers a little bit. So it's a little bit more easier to stay in your palate. Um, definitely yeah. more powerful and more finesse than Martel um, single um, distillery one. And uh, again, taste is just lingers in your mouth really, really long. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're ready, anytime, Next one we are going to taste is the uh, Doucet. All right, so let's move the uh, Doucet in there. And uh, so yeah, this comes from also one of the oldest cognac houses. Um, Chateau de Cognac actually is, 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 the, is the maker of, of this cognac. But uh, we're gonna, why don't, why don't we pick up and, and taste and talk about it? If anyone's wondering what, what uh, what this is here, this is actually the cross of Lorraine. Uh, it's a French symbol. So definitely, definitely richer right off the nose. A lot richer than the Martel for sure. Um, I'm getting a little bit of fresh cut um, wood in this. Yeah. Vanilla is very subdued, um, not as overpowering as the Remy Martin. Yeah, there's a lot of layers in this one. Uh, like you said, you get that wood. There's a little bit of a floral aspect that I'm getting as well, but I'll see if that translates to the palate. So let's give it a taste. Yeah, definitely richer, definitely more fuller bodied. I'm getting lots of, of uh, lots of layers of like honey and almonds and a still signature cognac, a ripe fruit. So this one, Although you're the, the Doucet is uh, aged for, even though it is a VSOP, this one's aged, this house has chosen to age it for a minimum of four and a half years. So you're, you're definitely getting more of that oak influence. Do you think that half year actually makes a little bit difference? It sure does. Uh, I mean, every, any, you know, any amount of times, that it can, it can spend to mellow out a little bit more, kind of immerse those flavors. And again, de depending on how, you know, how many blends of, of eau de vie they're, they're putting together, it's gonna allow that to mature and mellow out quite a bit more. Yeah, um, the vanilla and a little bit of um, uh, dry fruits flavor is definitely uh, lingering in the mouth right now. And um, at the back of the throat, there's a little bit of honey taste. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A little bit of honey, that dried fruit, a little bit of almond, I'll get a little bit of that nuttiness. And, and the finish is, is just very, it, it just, it goes down so smooth. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, 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 it's not even there. It, it almost leaves your throat a little bit dry, just, just enough. So you, you drink, you, you want to drink a little bit more. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, well, I guess we have uh, two more to go and um, next, second last one we're going to taste is the um, Cravassier XO. Now, um, Cravassier is one of my favorite ones as well, too, out of um, other cognacs that uh, I've tasted. And funny story about um, Cravassier is um, apparently this was uh, Napoleon's favorite cognac. And when he was to be exiled to uh, Corsica Island, he wanted to have um, barrels of Cravassier go with him. And um, I don't know whether that's a legend or the, um, the story, but um, his nephew, um, Napoleon III, he made a Cravassier as the, uh, the house cognac of the uh, French palace. So when you look at the, uh, uh, their label on the top or the, the front, there is a picture of um, men with a cap, you know, putting their arms in like, kind of like this which is kind of, for me, it's like signature uh, Napoleon style. And for one of the, most, I'd say, younger cognac houses, they've, they've really kind of created their space in, in the cognac market. I mean, we're looking at, for, for some of the other ones that we're tasting, we're looking at, you know, almost three, 300 plus years of, of production. Um, and, I, and when I say young, take that with a grain of salt. I mean, it was, th this house started in 1805, so still over, still over 200 years old, uh, but younger kind of compared to the rest. But that's what you know—a quality product. That's where a product, quality product will take you. Um, 
And this one being, of course, the XO, one of the, one of the higher end of the Covassier line, uh, aged for a minimum of 10 years uh, spent in that, in, those, in, those, in that French oak. Do you want to give us nose and oh, yeah. we see what this tastes like? Oh. Creme brulee. <laughs> yeah, t- creme brulee for sure. Lots, again, lots of vanilla on this one as well. Lots and lots of vanilla, you're right. Like aroma of um, Doucet VSOP, Remy Martin, comparing to uh, EXO, it's like night and day. Like there's more I mean, pronounced fla- um, aroma into EXO already. Absolutely, and that's, that's what's going to create like a, a, I don't want to say fuller body, that, make, that may make you think a little more intense, but it's much more well-rounded, it's much more dynamic, it's got tons of layers to it. I mean, we talk about creme brulee, we talk about vanilla, uh, candied orange, you're still getting that citrus. Everything's just, it's just a multi-layered, multi-layered spirit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you think about how much time it, those flavors get to, to blend together and mellow out and spending 10 years in an oak barrel. So minimum age is 10 years, but um, are they adding any older EDV into this? Yes. So the reason why, like I said, in 2018, they actually kind of, redid the designation. XO used to be a minimum of six years, but producers were going well above and beyond that, most of them 10 years on up. So any of these XOs, uh, you can find cognacs that are, or eau de vies that are 10 to 30, 30 years old sometimes. So the 10 is just the minimum time it needs to spend in, in the barrel. Just add to what you said, Dante. Um... When they took out the uh, XO went up to 10 years, um, I believe when they changed their regulation in 2018, they put Napoleon in their um, grade as well too for six years, right? Correct, yeah. So Napoleon is now kind of that uh, side designation to signify that six year mark. But for, for, the, mo- for, for the most part, you're, you're gonna continue to see VS, VSOP, and XO as the main, as the main, three, uh, main three markers. Um, you caught me a little bit of liquid in my mouth as I was, as I was tasting that one. Um, Lots of, I, I know we got vanilla, we got creme brulee, we got a little bit of that candied orange on, on, on the nose. Now I'm getting a lot more floral aspects uh, on the palate here. Um, I'm gonna try this again, actually. There's some um, floral, definitely for sure. Um, there is some um, blossom of flower. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm getting this right. Um, I'm getting a little bit iris as well too. Mm-hmm. But um, the vanilla uh, and the, uh, um, that really pronounced um, aroma of creme brulee. When you taste it, uh, citrus and the flower kind of takes it over for me. Oh yeah. And for those of you following along at, at home, um, what we taste and smell may not be exactly what you taste and smell. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's kind of up to everyone's personal palate. Everyone might taste or smell something completely different. Uh, Tom and I are just kind of sharing what we think as we go along here. I've been wrong many times in my life, according to my wife, so. <laughs> <laughs> and also for those of you following along at home, we are tasting five cognacs in a very, very short period of time. Uh, this video will be here uh, for you to watch over and over again. So please don't feel like you have to keep along the pace with us. Uh, if, you, if you pour yourself a little bit of uh, Martel or, or the Remy Martin or the Doucet, please take your time with it. Uh, it's definitely not a race. No, no, take your time. We I definitely mean, want to get you the information in a, in a nice short period of time. Would you suggest um, um, customers going into um, cognac to invest in a really nice glass as well too? Let's say the sniffer yeah, that you're using. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, glass can have uh, def- definitely an impact. What I'm using right now is a Glen Cairn. Uh, it's almost like a, it's basically a whiskey glass. Uh, I like it just because the, the tulip shape of the glass allows for those kind of aromas to be funneled up to the top. I see you're using an ISO wine tasting glass, which is a great glass also to use because it kind of has that same kind of um, funneled shape. Um, and what people also like to do is, is use kind of classic brandy snifters, also very balloon shaped glass uh, that kind of brings the aroma and the flavor all the way to the forefront and up to yours. Uh, so any of those three, I think for, for, uh, for drinking cognac is gonna be just fine. Okay. How do you find the um, the finish on the 
on the XO here? It's uh, still lingering in my mouth. Um, the vanilla, yeah. um, solitaire vanilla and the citrus. And um, Lots. that's what's sticking around for me the most. It's probably that orange, yep. a little bit more of that orange and that citrus. It's just, you really start to see the difference in quality. Not that these, you know, aren't for, for the price points. These are all fantastic cognacs. But as you, you, you really do get what you pay for. Um, you go up to the higher marks and you start getting quality that's, man, you, you, I can sit. I can already, like, I'm going to keep this bottle. I'm going to sit by my fireplace and I'm going to have this, you know, all night. Well, maybe not all night, but. <laughs> it's, um, you, you, like you said, you really need to be patient when you drink this. It's not going to be one shot or, hey, let's have fun. You just got to sit down by the fire, uh, maybe um, grab chocolate or something or um, chicoudery dish and just enjoy it, right? And I think that's be one of the better way to go. I'm glad you brought that up because cognac is very friendly with, with food, whether it's small snacks, crackers, cheese, just as you would with, with a wine as well, right? I mean, technically this is, like I said, brandy wine or, or burnt wine. Um, it's made from grapes, it kind of has those same, those same aspects. Very, very easy to pair with, with uh, small foods, nuts, berries, very lovely. So, uh, last one? Last one. Um, last one. Hennessy, wow. Um, let's... Uh try to smell it and see how how it is. Absolutely. So this house, a little more background on Hennessy, this house started in uh, 1765. So kind of in between where the Cavassiers and the Martels uh, hang out. And as we talk about and continue to talk about XOs and kind of the quality of the XOs, Hennessy was, was the first one to kind of brand any cognac an XO or an extra old. Um, you're Maurice right Hennessy was the, yep. was the first one to, to kind of to kind of brand that designation. Even the color wise, um, I noticed uh, Hennessy is a little bit more darker, it's more than Cravassier, but aroma wise, it's more a little bit subtle than what the Cravassier brought out. Yeah, I still get I still get some heavy citrus, um, but I'm getting almost like a, like a silky butterscotch type of note as well. Butterscotch, caramel a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm getting confused with the caramel and the toffee here, but I think definitely a little bit, yeah. Yeah, caramel well, let's give it sure. a taste. Mm. Mm. Now I'm getting a whole lot more of that signature kind of dried fruit. Dry fruits, a little bit yeah. of dark chocolate. Yeah, definitely some dark chocolate. Yep. Uh, yeah, a little hint, yeah, a little hint of chocolate, definitely dried fruits. And again, more of those kind of like darker fruits, like uh, kind of those plums. Plums, uh, for sure. Plum, a little bit of raisin. Oh, that one's really nice. So this one is, uh, speaking a little more to the product of this one, how I said cognac is kind of a blend of, of eau de vies. From, from different, uh, from different uh, distilling houses. This one is a blend of over 100 eau de vie. So they're really- the, There is difference. Going back taste. to what you're saying about the craftsmanship and the quality and the care of what they're producing. Uh, they, they take over 100 different styles of eau de vie to create this product, all aged for over 10 years. And again, saying 10 is just the minimum. You're probably looking at 10, you know, 14, 15, 20, who, know, who knows how old some of the eau de vie that, that's going into this blend um, are. So how long would it take to complete a bottle of XO? I mean, it, it's a craftsmanship and it's an art um, when, when I taste it, because every single one of them is, is very different and it has their unique style. Absolutely. So when, when you're thinking, I mean, it, that's why the, you know, the seller masters, their job is so important. The seller masters who look over, who look after the blends and, and the quality of these products. They're basically taking all these little pieces and blending them together to make sure that, you know, the Hennessy XO that you, you bought, you know, maybe a couple of years ago and, and the one that we have in front of us now is still of the same quality, is still the same flavor profile. And when you're thinking about these products and blending them together, they're, they're very, you know, volatile products. Like your, your harvest from year to year may change, you know, yeah. depending on how much sun, how much rain. And that's why the production of the grapes is, is the first step. So going back to the, the overall quality of the production of cognac, you start with the quality of the grapes. You start with those specific varietals you, you can have. Um, when you can harvest them, are they hand harvested? Are they machine harvested? Checking the acidity levels of those grapes. 
you know, making that wine and then taking that wine, testing that wine, putting it through two different uh, pot still distillations where there is also an art, you know, where, how you distill, how long you distill, where you cut kind of those heads and tails of that distillation. And then after that, you know, aging, aging those in different types of oak, those two different types of French oak that we, that we, that we spoke about. And then after that, waiting, you know, two, four, 10, exactly, 15, yeah, 20 yeah. years, and then blending those all together to create a final product. I mean, it's very, very long time. And when you say, when you said patience, I mean, it's definitely, definitely something that the, ma the, the seller masters have is, is patience. <laughs> well, I don't think I have the patience to be honest with you. That's why I just <laughs> buy the bottle, right? Um, so let's say, like I said before, for me, um, when I started drinking cognac, it was, you know, part of it was my dad, with my dad, that memory that I had, but mostly it was because of James Bond. And um, someone's starting to, uh, starting to get into cognac. Um, because when you drink scotch or bourbon, sorry, let's go with scotch. Um, sure. You tend to go with what your father drank, but when you branch out, you kind of go into uh, the region and the area of the taste that you like. So since Correct. you mentioned there's a six different regions in cognac, would you recommend someone to, hey, I'm gonna follow this label or start from the different areas first? If, if, they're, if they're branching out from say whiskey or, or, or scotch, I, I think it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error in the beginning. You're gonna find, like when I first started my whiskey journey, it's more about finding what you like. I mean, you find the space sides, you find, you find, the, you find the islas a little more peaty. But when it comes into cognac, you're gonna to start to realize do you like, you know, the, do you like the orchard fruit? Do you like the, the, the darker fruits, the plums, the raisins? Um, do you like a little more citrus? And as you go through, you'll be able to figure out kind of what regions. Most of the higher end, higher end cognacs are going to focus on those two champagne regions that I spoke about when we were talking about the Remy Martin, the Fine uh, champagne, yep. Grand Champagne and Grand the Petit champagne, 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 because they say that terroir has kind of the best, the best soil for, for making the best cognac. But then again, it's, at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. Um, it also depends what you're looking for in your cognac. If you're looking to mix it and make a cocktail, if you want something a little bit lighter, more fruit forward, something, something like the Martel might be right up your alley, right? If you're looking for something with a little more, um, little more full body, a little warmer, a little bit of a silkier finish, then uh, the Doucet might be more up your alley. So it really depends on kind of what you're looking for in your liquid. So since you mentioned uh, mixing it together, um, what would be the best grade to use to uh, mix? Would you mix uh, XO or would you mix? I'm not going to stop anybody no, no. <laughs> from, from, from mixing whatever they want. If you, if you want to, if you want to take Hennessy XO and mix in a cocktail, go right ahead. <laughs> uh, but for, 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 for ease and probably easier on your, on your wallet, I'd say stick to like a VS or a VSOP. Um, and not only that, like I said, the flavor profile of the Martell, it's a little bit lighter bodied. It's a little more, it's a little more fruit forward. It's going to play well with different flavors in a cocktail. It's be able, it's going to be able to shine. If you're making more of a spirit forward cocktail, if you want to do like a, like the original Sazerac that's made with cognac, sure. You can move up to a higher mark, like a VSOP or an XO, because you're not putting that much else into it. Um, that's going to kind of take away from that flavor of that cognac. Uh, if anything, it'll just accentuate it a little bit more. Uh, but the one that we're going to be making today is going to be uh, a cognac variation of a French 75. Okay. So because we're putting a little bit of citrus, a little bit of lemon, some champagne, uh, we'll stick to something a little bit lighter bodied, like the Martel VS. Um, and it'll be a great, a great drink. Okay, excellent. Um, one, I guess one last question, or I have many questions, but the um, question I have is the, um, someone who's getting into cognac right now. Um, how would you recommend them to drink? Like over ice or a little bit of water in it or just straight up nice and neat? Uh, again, a little bit, it's gonna be a little trial there and that's personal preference, especially for me when I'm drinking cognac, I think it really depends on your setting and you know, what time are you having it before dinner? Are you having it after dinner? Some people like to have it neat in a brandy sniffer, a little bit warmer as a digestif. Um, you can have it on the rocks. It really depends what, what you like. Um, and again, same thing with whiskey. A lot of people say, oh, you should have it neat, have a little drop of water, or you, you, know, you can't put more than an ice cube in it. That's usually someone, some personal preference. So it's really going to be how you like. And I would suggest trying all different types. Try it neat, try it in a snifter, try it with a drop of water to kind of open up those aromas and those flavors, um, and, tr and try it on the rocks and see which one you like better. Obviously, if you 
put it on, on ice or on rocks, it will dilute. Um, and, and that's okay too. It really depends on, on what you like. So there's really no correct way to drink champ, uh, sorry, to drink cognac. Uh, it's really more about how you, how, how you'll enjoy it the most. That, that's a uh, honest and a uh, very uh, important answer. Yeah. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, um, next. Cocktail? Cocktail? Yeah. 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 Next, next cocktail. Is, is, is our cocktail. We're going we're gonna to show our, uh, our viewers here how to make, uh, Nice cocktail. I'm just going to run and grab a, a nice frozen flute, uh, flute glass out of my freezer here. While um, Dante is uh, setting up for um, cocktail, um, you can actually get some um, um, ingredients and uh, steps to make um, what Dante is making on our website at the LCB as well too. Okay. So the cocktail we're making today is a cognac variation of a French 75. Uh, very simple cocktail to make. Cognac, a little bit of lemon juice, simple syrup, and uh, some champagne. So we'll go ahead and, and jump right in. Uh, let's see here. So I've got a measuring jigger. A tip that I like to, to kind of tell the viewers that they're making cocktails at home is I always start with the least expensive ingredients first because if I make a mistake, I'm not pouring out the good stuff or the expensive stuff. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the simple syrup. All this recipe calls for is a quarter ounce of simple syrup. If you don't know what simple syrup is, it is a simple combination of sugar and water. You can put equal parts, if you, you know, 500, 500 mils of sugar, 500 mils of water, put it on your stove, heat it up, let it dissolve, um, and then let it cool, and then you've got yourself a, uh, a simple syrup. So this is just the sugar and water. Can you use the flavored um, simple syrup in this one, or just gotta be neutral stuff? You can, um, I feel, uh, classic simple syrup probably works best because you really want to retain the kind of base flavor of the cognac that we're going to be using. Uh, you're still going to get the, if, if you use a flavored simple syrup, you may lose kind of that citrus and that orchard fruit that's going to come from, it's going to come from the cognac. Um, what we're trying to accomplish with the simple syrup is just a little bit of sweetness uh, to kind of balance out the acidity that we're going to get from our fresh lemon juice. So uh, we did a quarter ounce of simple syrup. We're going to do also a quarter ounce of fresh lemon juice. Again, another important part of making cocktails at home is trying to use fresh squeezed juice whenever you can. It, it's such a simple thing to do, but it makes the world of a difference. The, the store-bought stuff, it's very convenient. It's easy to keep in your fridge, but it's not going to give you that same vibrancy that you're going to get out of, okay. out of using fresh squeezed So fresh the squeezed big juice. yellow jug will be out of question then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so we got the quarter ounce of the simple syrup. We've got the quarter ounce of lemon juice. And we're going to put in one ounce of our Martel DS single distillery cognac. I'm using a jigger to measure all my ingredients. Uh, one, just so I know how much myself or my guests are consuming and I can keep track of that. We don't want anybody over consuming, but also it, it allows you to create a consistent cocktail. Uh, that way you know exactly what you're pouring into your cocktail every single time. So those are the only three ingredients that we're going to put into our shaking tin. And then we're going to add some ice. I'm going to get this filled right up. Give that a nice little tap or a quick shake. That shakes a workout, man. That wasn't quick. Uh, what, basically what we're trying to do with the, with the shake is, uh, just emulsify those ingredients, get that simple syrup, get that lemon juice, get that cognac all mixed up, get those flavors emulsified, create a nice base for our cocktail here. And then we're going to fine strain this over our frozen fruit, uh, champagne flute. So after shaking, this should probably give you about two, two and a half ounces of, of liquid. We'll get that right in there. And then uh, last but not least, we're going to top that up with some champagne. Champagne Stay or sparkling got... wine? For this purpose, because we're using cognac, we got to stick with the champagne regions uh, in France. So we are definitely using champagne today. Got a little, little small bottle of uh, Moet and Chardon here. Little uh, education tip for our customers. Um, the champagne that um, uh, Dante men mentioned about and I talked about, 
Um, Champagne is actually a chalky soil coming from the hill area. So um, when you drink champagne, that's why there's a little bit of mineral flavor to it. So sparkling wine will also work in this recipe. If that's what you have at home, by all means, feel free to use the sparkling wine. Um, just like how cognac is, is a specific style of brandy, uh, but you can only call it cognac if it's made in the cognac region, same thing with champagne. Sh sparkling wine can be very similar, made in the same exact way, just doesn't come from the Champagne region of France. So I put three to four ounces of our champagne in our cocktail, and we're just gonna finish that off, garnish with a little bit of a lemon twist uh, or a lemon peel. Uh, if you have a peeler at home, you can you know, peel lemon just like this. And what this does is I like to express this a little bit just over the top. You may be able to see the oils kind of coming through there, just like that. Um, and you can give the kind of the, the rim of the glass a little bit of a, a rub. Um, if you want to get a little bit fancier, you can cut your garnish into, you know, a little more, little more of a design, cut a little slit into it. You can leave that right on the rim of the glass, just like that. And that is your cognac variation of the French 75. You can find that recipe on lcbo.com slash cognac cocktails, along with other great cognac recipes like the Brandy or Cognac Alexander, the classic sidecar, and the uh, original Sazerac. And uh, there you go. That looks really good, Dante. Um, hopefully we can have that next time um, in person. Absolutely, we'll, have, we'll definitely have to share one uh, in each other's company when, when we're allowed to do so. Hey, I'm sure it's gonna come soon, right? Dante, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, you can actually order um, all this product, including other ones, online as well, too. You can use um, our e-commerce channel. Um, you can order online, and you can ship the product to any LCBO store close to your location. And the other one is the, uh, you can do the uh, same-day pickup. Um, all you do is order online, um, store of your choice, and uh, hopefully we can get everything done for you. Uh, within three to four hours window. Um, the other way is the, um, the good old fashion. You can actually walk into the store. Um, currently, we're closed on Mondays, but we're open from Sunday, Tuesday to Saturday. And when you do come in store, um, please do wear a mask and uh, keep your social distance. Once again, thank you for uh, watching Dante and I today. Thanks, everyone.